Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are here to talk about these fun little guys. This is my Indonesian blue tongue skank caster and we're going to be giving you a complete blue tongue skank care guide. I'm going to try to tell you everything you need to know to take care of a blue tongue skank. So I've had caster for about three years, I think three years, something like that. First, let's talk about why they make great pets. Blue tongue skinks are really great pets, especially for beginner reptile keepers, because overall their care is pretty simple. They are not very difficult to take care of. They are very friendly lizards. They're usually pretty docile and easy to handle. So one really important thing to know about blue tongue skinks from the beginning is there are differences in their care based on what subspecies you have because there are different types of blue tongue skinks based on where they're found in the world. So to break it down, the easiest way is there are Australian blue tongue skinks and there are Indonesian blue tongue skinks. And there's subspecies for both of these. So in Australia, you'll find subspecies such as northern blue tongue skinks, which are one of the most common blue tongue skinks. Then there's also eastern, western, shingleback, pygmy. There's more, but those are just some of them. And then for Indonesian, there's just your classic Indonesian blue tongue skink. There's Halmahera, Meraki, Irian Jaya. You get it, there's a bunch of different kinds. Overall, both Australian and Indonesian blue tongue skinks do have pretty much the same care. The main difference you'll find with their care is the humidity and their lighting requirements can differ a little bit based on what subspecies you have. So I'm going to cover that a little bit and just give you a general idea of what to look for. But I would highly recommend figuring out what blue tongue skink you wanna get look up for your specific subspecies, what humidity and what temperature and all of that stuff you're gonna want for your specific species of blue tongue skink. But overall, a lot of the other aspects of their care is the same. That's really important to mention. Another really important thing to mention is a lot of the time, Indonesian blue tongue skinks are wild caught. This is because in captivity, people just have a harder time with getting them to reproduce. So it's a lot easier to just catch them from the wild. And obviously there are issues with this, such as wild caught blue tongue skinks are going to usually be more skittish. And they're also going to sometimes have parasites or they could have different diseases from the wild that you might not wanna bring into your house, especially if you have other reptiles. And there's also the ethical aspect of some people just don't agree with capturing reptiles from the wild and keeping them as pets. So if you go to a breeder to purchase a blue tongue skink and you're getting an Indonesian, I would highly recommend asking them if it's wild caught or captive bred because sometimes they will try to hide it from you. Hopefully the breeder you're going to will be honest and tell you if it's wild caught but just know that a lot of the times Indonesians are wild caught, but you can get them captive bred if you go to the right place. And then as far as the Australian species and the Northern blue tongue skinks, they are pretty much always captive bred, at least in America. Not sure about Australia necessarily where they're from. There might be more wild caught ones there because that's actually where they're native to. But at least in North America, if you're going to purchase a blue tongue skink, you can pretty much guarantee that any Australian species is going to be captive bred. The next thing is blue tongue skinks are solitary. So you can only keep one blue tongue skink per enclosure. Do not cohabitate them. They are not social animals. They do not need a friend and it'll probably just stress them out. I wouldn't recommend cohabiting them. And as far as their lifespan goes, they can live a long time. Blue tongue skinks have an average lifespan of around 20 years or longer. Longer. So if you are looking into getting a blue tongue skink, make sure you're ready for a 20 plus year commitment because it's a long time. So now getting into the actual husbandry of the blue tongue skink, the first thing you're obviously going to need is an enclosure. Now when you look up general care standards for blue tongue skinks, a lot of people tend to recommend 40 gallon breeders as the absolute bare minimum you can keep a blue tongue skink in. However, I personally disagree with this. Of course, you probably could keep a blue tongue skink in a 40 gallon breeder, but I don't think it's very adequate or gives them enough space to actually roam around 
and I just don't think that's a good size. They are pretty big blizzards. So I would recommend nothing smaller than a 75 gallon for an adult blue tongue skink. So 75 gallon tanks are usually about 48 inches long by 18 inches wide and 21 inches tall, just to give you a general idea of the size you're going to need. However, obviously the bigger, the better, the more space you can give your blue tongue skink, it's going to love. One enclosure that I would highly recommend is a Zen Habitat and I actually have an affiliate link for them which will be down in the description below. Zen Habitats are amazing for blue tongue skinks or bearded dragons or a lot of other types of reptiles. They come in all kinds of different sizes. The best size that I would say for a blue tongue skink would be a 4x2x2 by two by two Zen Habitat because it gives adequate space to give them a lot of substrate and Zen Habitats are actually pretty affordable because they come disassembled, so the shipping cost is really cheap. And they ship to the US and Canada, so I have both a US and a Canadian link down in the description below. Make sure to check out Zen Habitats if you're looking for an enclosure. Zen Habitats are just one of the most affordable reptile habitat options as far as what you can order online. But if you have a local reptile store, then you might be able to find a 75 gallon enclosure locally. And then the next thing you're gonna need is substrates. So really quick, one thing I forgot to mention is I will have Amazon affiliate links down in the description below of most of the supplies and different things that I mentioned in this video. So you can easily find them and click the links and I will get a small commission if you use my links. So if you're going to buy any of these supplies on Amazon, then please just use my links and I would highly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Make sure you visit the description down below. Okay, thanks. So for substrate for blue tongue skinks, the substrate you're going to use might depend on what species you have. My favorite thing to use, which I use for my blue tongue skink, is a mix of organic soil and cypress mulch because I just really like this because it's really good for them to burrow in. It also holds humidity in really well. So I would recommend using like cypress mulch and you can mix in, like I said, organic soil or you could mix in eco earth. If you have a Northern blue tongue skink or an Australian species that in general that requires lower humidity, some people do use aspen shavings because aspen shavings don't hold in as much humidity. And if you have a species that doesn't require higher humidity, then you don't necessarily need a substrate that holds humidity super well. But I personally just am not a fan of Aspen because it's really dusty and I don't like the way it looks. But it is an option. And you're also going to want to provide your blue tongue skink with at least three or four inches of substrate because they love to burrow. Whenever your blue tongue skink is hiding, they're going to dig down into the substrate. So you want to give them adequate space to do so. Now for lighting for a blue tongue skink, you're going to want a basking bulb to give them a hot spot on the enclosure. I think some people I've heard of using heat pads for blue tongue skinks, but I personally just don't agree with that, I think that you should use a basking bulb, you can use a halogen bulb, or you can use like a reptile basking bulb, but basically you're going to want to achieve a basking temperature of about 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and then the cool side of the enclosure is going to be around 80 degrees. The wattage of basking bulb you're going to need is going to depend on different factors like how far away from the ground the light is, how hot the room is, different things like that. I would personally recommend getting a dimmer for your basking bulb because then you can easily adjust how bright it is and just adjust it as needed. And again, the exact temperature you need for your specific blue tongue skink might vary a little bit depending on the species. From what I've found, a lot of them are pretty much in the same range of 95 to 100 degrees. Another thing that I somehow forgot to mention is you will want to get a thermometer and a hygrometer. They also make ones that show both but basically the thermometer is going to be for reading the temperature and the hygrometer is to read the humidity. And I recommend getting a digital one because those tend to be the most accurate. And you wanna make sure that you place the probe down towards where the animal is actually going to be because one of the biggest mistakes I see people make all the time is they place the thermometer or the hygrometer like at the very top of the enclosure or in the middle of the enclosure but you want it to be placed at the same level 
as the ground basically where your animal is going to be exploring the most because the temperature and the humidity can be different in different areas of the enclosure. Make sure you get those and again they will be linked in the description below. As far as UVB goes, it is pretty debated whether or not blue tongue sinks actually need UVB. From what I've found, they can survive without UVB. You don't necessarily need to give them UVB. People have been keeping them without UVB for quite a while without having any issues. However, most reptile keepers are starting to give their blue tongue skinks UVB and find that they can benefit from it. So I would recommend giving your blue tongue skink UVB because even though it can survive its life without it, it is still beneficial to provide it for them. UVB is important for vitamin D synthesis and studies have just shown that blue tongue skinks that were given UVB have better levels of vitamin D than blue tongue skinks that are just supplemented with vitamin D. So I would recommend giving them UVB. So if you have a species that's from Australia, I would recommend giving them a 10.0 T5 linear UVB bulb. And if you're getting one that's Indonesian, then they will most likely need a 5.0 T5 bulb. The difference between the 10.0 and the 5.0 is the 10.0 gives off more UVB. In Australia, blue tongue skinks are exposed to more UVB than Indonesia because Indonesia is more shaded in a lot of places. Again, this is something that you might want to look into the specific species you're keeping. I've seen a lot of people say they give their blue tongue skinks the 5.0 UVB, but then there's also some people who say they give them 10.0. But from what I've found, a lot of people give their Australian species the 10.0. And if you have an Indonesian one, it's more likely you're gonna give them a 5.0. And you'll want the lights to be on a 12 hour cycle. So 12 hours on and 12 hours off. And I would recommend getting a timer just because it's a lot easier than having to manually turn them on and off every single day. So as for the humidity in your Blue Tongue Skinks enclosure, a lot of the common Australian species like a humidity of around 30 to 40 percent, whereas Indonesian species will require about 60 to 80 percent. And again, the exact humidity range you're going to want will vary depending on different subspecies. Some Indonesian species like humidity of up to 80 percent, whereas some are more like 60 percent. So again, can't stress this enough, look into your specific subspecies. If you have a species that requires higher humidity, then you are going to want, again, a substrate that holds humidity well, like the dirt and cypress mulch. You can also add sphagnum moss because that helps hold in moisture as well. So then for decor inside of the enclosure, you do want to give them places to hide and things to climb on and explore because it's good enrichment for them. A lot of the times when blue tongue skinks go to hide, again, they're going to burrow into the substrate, but I still like to to provide mine with hides on the surface that they can crawl into because I've found that Castor does like to use those. So just make sure you provide them with different hides. I love using cork wood, especially if it's a humid enclosure because cork doesn't tend to mold. You can add cork rounds for them to climb in. You can add different pieces of cork for them to kind of like hide under and climb on top of. And then of course you can also add fake plants in there, which I have provided for my blue tongue skink. It's good enrichment. However, you will probably find that your blue tongue skink might knock it all over and mess it up a lot of the time. You can also add like rocks in the enclosure and that'll just provide some surface for your blue tongue skink to climb on. And it will also naturally help file their nails down a little bit because their nails can get really sharp. And then obviously you're also going to need a water dish for them to drink out of. I'd also recommend getting Reptisafe. This is a dechlorinator that makes tap water safe for reptiles. So if you're using tap water, I would recommend getting Reptisafe. Blue tongue skink diet. This is where it gets fun because blue tongue skinks in the wild, they are scavengers. So they will pretty much eat anything edible that they come across. So they will eat different protein sources. They might eat some bugs, but they'll also eat meat. They'll eat vegetables, they'll eat fruit. Literally anything that they come across, they will eat in the wild. So. In captivity, there is a huge variety of things that you can feed your blue tongue skink. So let's get into what I would recommend feeding them. First of all, you need to give them a balanced ratio of protein to vegetables to fruits. So baby blue tongue skinks or juveniles are gonna want 
kind of like a 50% protein to 40% veggies and 10% fruit. They're going to need higher protein because they're babies and they just need more protein to grow. Once they are adults, you can move down to 40% protein, 50% vegetables and 10% fruit. You never want to feed them a ton of fruit. Fruit is really just a treat. Let's get into what specifically you want to feed them. One really easy thing that you can feed them and it's pretty common with blue tongue skinks is to feed them dog or cat food. You'll only want to feed cat food to blue tongue skinks that are under a year old because again, the younger ones need a higher protein source and cat food is higher in protein than dog food is. So you can feed cat food when they're younger, but once they're over a year old, you'll want to switch over to dog food. Don't go and only feed them dog food because you want to give them variety. For me, dog food is just something I feed them every once in a while just to throw in some variety. Some things to keep in mind. First of all, do not feed them dry kibble or any dry dog food, only wet dog food. And you want to get a high quality grain free dog food for your blue tongue skink. The best option in my personal opinion is to try to feed a raw dog food because in the wild when you think about it blue tongue skinks aren't coming across highly processed meats that are cooked. Um, they're usually going to come across like a dead carcass and going to be eating out of it and it's going to be raw meat. So they are equipped to eat raw meat and I would personally recommend feeding them raw meat. If you wanna feed a dog food, I would recommend getting a raw dog food. You could also get a dehydrated raw food and rehydrate it and feed that to them. Instinct, which is by Nature's Variety, this is a really good frozen raw dog food that you can thaw out and give to your blue tongue skinks. Other than just dog food, you do wanna feed them a variety of other things just to give them a big variety in their diets. Different protein sources that you can use include things like earthworms, superworms, dubia roaches, you could do locusts, snails. Again, you can go with raw meat, and I would recommend going with a raw dog food. You can also do cooked meat if you are super worried about it, but again, I just personally think raw meat is fine. You can feed them eggs, but I wouldn't feed them eggs a ton, just every once in a while. And then as for veggies, you can feed them different types of greens, like collard greens, turnip greens, and mustard greens, squash, pumpkin. As for fruits, you can feed things like bananas and berries and other things as well. As far as their diet goes, I would honestly recommend just looking up a list of veggies that are good for them. There's lists of fruits that are safe for them and lists of different protein sources. And just try to give them a variety. As for how often to feed your blue tongue skink, if it is under three months old, I would feed them daily. Anything over three months old, about every other day. And then when your blue tongue skink is an adult, so I would say around a year or older, then I would feed them only probably about twice a week. And one thing you don't want to forget is to give them supplements. So the two biggest ones are calcium without D3 and calcium with D3. So there's a ton of different brands that make calcium for reptiles. I don't think it makes a huge difference what you use. I just use the Zoomed Repti Calcium. You're gonna wanna give them mostly vitamin without D3. And then I just use the with D3 probably about once or twice a month for my blue tongue skink, especially because I provide my blue tongue with UVB. So my blue tongue doesn't need a ton of vitamin D3 supplementation, but if you're not giving your blue tongue skink UVB, you're gonna wanna use vitamin with D3 more frequently. Reptiles can overdose on vitamin D3, so you don't wanna give them vitamin D3 all of the time. Now, typically you don't have to worry about this too much because it is kind of hard to overdose your reptile on D3. Just make sure you're not giving it to them like every single day and they will be fine. The other thing that I like to give my blue tongue skink sometimes is a multivitamin. Now I've seen some people debate whether or not a multivitamin is necessary if you do feed your blue tongue skink a dog food because usually dog foods are fortified with a bunch of different vitamins. So some people say a multivitamin isn't necessary if you are feeding dog food. I still use a multivitamin just every once in a while just in case just to make sure. Those are really the only supplements you're going to need. Calcium is super important. If you do not give your blue tongue skink calcium, they can suffer from a deficiency and get something like MBD. So make sure you give them calcium. Do not skimp out on it. It's super important. 
As far as maintenance or cleaning your Blue Tongue Skinks enclosure goes, it's honestly not super difficult. You just want to spot clean the poop out of their enclosure whenever you see that they've pooped and give them fresh water pretty much daily. I find Blue Tongue Skinks love to just walk straight through their water dish and my blue tongue skink likes to burrow underneath the water dish, knocks it over and gets dirt all in it. You're gonna need to replace the water pretty frequently. And then I usually only deep clean the enclosure every couple of months. So yeah, I think that is basically it for my blue tongue skink care guide. That is pretty much everything you need to know. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything to add, make sure to utilize the comment section down below. I will try to reply to any questions you might have about your blue tongue skink care. If you you have any remaining questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're new here and give this video a thumbs up if you found it to be helpful. I'll have my social media links down below if you would like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram. And I will see you guys in my next video.